So there are a lot of good anime from 2016, something you would know if you watched my massive Top 100 Anime of the Year video. There are great action shows, great thrillers, great romances, great slice of life, and even great etchies, and I didn't think I'd ever say those last two. There really was no shortage of anime last year for me to enjoy, hence the reason it took until early March for me to finally get that video out, and there are still shows that I need to go back and watch at some point. But all this talk about it being such a great year raises a very important question, and that is, was it the greatest year of anime ever? If you've been around my channel a while, you might remember that I made a similar video around a year ago addressing a comment that claimed that 2016 was the best year of anime, and well, that was easily my most controversial video. And the major complaint about it was that I could not judge the year as a whole because it was only spring. Well, now that the year is over and I've seen far more anime from 2016 than any sane person should, that complaint is no longer valid, so it's time to get back to that topic. It's certainly not a simple question to answer, and you might be saying it's subjective depending on what anime a certain person likes, and you're right. But today, I want to take an objective look at this subjective topic through my subjective tastes. Feel free to disagree, and I would be interested to see how you would come to your own answer for this question if this was the best year of anime or not. So what I'm going to do today is see if 2016 was the best year ever for anime, and the best way to do this would be to compare it to what was the best year prior and see how it compares. And there seems to be a somewhat rough consensus in the community that the community views 2006 as the best year. This is based off the analysis Digibro did, and also the year that that anime stomp had the most favorites from, and looking through the charts it seemed to have the most shows that are still highly regarded today, so I'm going to go with 2006. I know this might not be the perfect way to pick a best year, but it seems like the anime community as a whole really values 2006, so we're just going to go with that. So in addition to the question of how to compare two different anime, we have the question of how to compare two years of anime, but what I'm going to do is look at the top 11 anime from each year and compare them. Because really, bad shows don't really corrupt the year as a whole. I mean, I don't think 2016 was worse because Big Order and Super Lovers existed. And I decided to go with top 11 because it's close to 10 and it would eliminate the possibility of ties. Plus, when talking about top anime from 2016, I really don't want to leave any of my top 11 now. Plus, and most importantly, this is my video and I can do whatever I want. So I'll compare each rank, the first anime of each year, the second one, and so on, and whichever year has the better anime for the most number of ranks wins the title of best year of anime of all time. But if I'm going to talk about the top 11 anime from each of these years, then I have to figure out what the top anime from each of these years is. Now, if only there is a top list from each year that I could pull a top 11 from. Oh wait, there is. So, did I really watch all those anime from both years just to refute a point that a couple people made in the comments of my video from a year ago? Yes, yes I did. Well, not just for this reason, but mostly. And now I just fit on my microphone a little bit. Oh well. So on screen you will see the top 11 anime of 2006 and also from 2016. If you want to know my reasons for ranking these shows as I did, then go check out those videos. I watched everything from 2006 that interested me and wasn't super long, and I tried everything from 2016 and either completed or dropped it, so you can't argue that I didn't watch much from these two years. You might say that 2016 has a little bit of an advantage here because I tried so many more anime and therefore watched some I wouldn't have expected to like, but well, I was not going to watch everything from 2006 because I want this video to come out before 2018. Okay, so let's get to the comparisons to find out which year is the best year of anime ever. Are you excited? Well, I am, because as of recording this, I don't know who the winner is going to be since as of writing and recording this video, I forgot what some of the entries were and I haven't gotten that far in the script yet. I may even have like a friend to send me the uh, anime of the different ranks so I can like record it one at a time and that will be fun. <laughs> because yeah, I don't know who's going to win. Any guesses? So I guess you could like skip to the end of the uh, video or something and find out. But yeah, I can't do that because I cannot time travel, unfortunately. That'd be fun. Anyway, as one of my favorite anime opinions says, let's go. Number one, Death Note versus Girlish Number. Well, here are two completely different shows. From 2006, we have Death Note, the classic psychological thriller and one of the most popular anime ever made. The feeling of suspense it offered is unmatched in the medium with the mental battle between Light and L. I love seeing how each one tried to one up the other and trying to figure out who would win. There are those who would say that the show goes downhill in the final arc, which is kind of true, but I still like that part, and the first two thirds was more than enough to make up for any issues I might have with the final part. And then we have Girlish Number, which is one of the best slice of life animes that I have ever seen. I really like how it takes place in the working world, something that I can relate to, and more specifically, it shows a cynical look at the voice acting industry. I loved how unique it was with twisting the whole follow your dreams mantra. Each of the characters had an interesting backstory and their own struggles, which made for an interesting show, and the main character, Tisue, was both a lovable idiot who you wanted to root for, but also someone you wanted to smack across the face of more than occasion. There are a lot of aspects here I could connect to and relate to, which made the show oddly inspiring. It's hard to compare these two shows to each other because of how different they are, and I really do recommend both of them, but it is not hard for me to pick out a winner here, and that would be Death Note because I like my thrillers more than shows about ordinary life. So 2006 takes the lead with the first one. For number two, we have Zegapain versus Boku no Hero. 
Ah, yes, Boku no Hero, the show that proved I still love seeing underdogs with superpowers fight evil and become heroes. And while there may be some cliches throughout the series, the execution is done so well that it hits me in all the ways it needs to, from the hype and the tension of the battles to the emotions of Deku being told he can become a hero, and even to the comedy, Boku no Hero is one of the best examples of the genre that I have ever seen. But can it really be better than Zega Pain? Zega Pain is one of the most overlooked anime I've seen, and is easily my favorite mech show of all time. It explores the blend between the science fiction setting and the ordinary setting to tell an exciting story about what it means to be human and to truly live. The questions that the characters have to answer about their own existence left a lasting impact on me like few other shows ever could. This really is one of the best examples of the type of storytelling anime is capable of, a captivating story filled with mature concepts and thought-provoking themes. So, once again, it is easy for me to pick out a winner. And, to no surprise, it's Boku no Hero. Well, it shouldn't be a surprise if you know how much I love a good action shonen. Sure, Zagapane is an amazing show that you really should watch, but doesn't have the same tension or feeling of hype that Boku no Hero delivers. Maybe I'm shallow for liking the raw, visceral feeling of a story about superhumans more than a story about philosophy, but I can't help but love everything Boku no Hero offers, so it wins this round. Number 3. Black Lagoon vs. Surveyamp. Now here we are with two shows that are easy to compare because they both have similar goals. Be a cool action show with lots of violence, and they succeeded at this goal quite well. Black Lagoon pretends to be grounded in reality while exploring the darker parts of the world and humanity, while Surveyamp takes a more fantasy approach with the vampires and the human masters. Then again, Black Lagoon did have those killer ancestor vampire twins, which was just awesome, but I don't know if they quite count in the same way that Surveyamp's vampires do. Anyway, the show's strengths are pretty similar. Exciting action done with great animation, great character exploration, along with some interesting themes, plus they both have fantastic openings done in questionable English, and not to mention great English dubs. But with two shows so similar, it's pretty easy to pick a winner once again, and that is Black Lagoon. Black Lagoon really nails the whole ruler cool thing, and while the action in Surveyamp is cool and animated wonderfully, it doesn't have the same flair as something like Killer Maids do. Both shows did have a somewhat weak start with Black Lagoon feeling dull, and Surveyamp feeling like it was trying to do too many different things at once, not take long for them to pick up steam. Surveyamp did have an overall plot while Black Lagoon didn't, but Rock's character development and growth made up for this. Black Lagoon also has a stronger exploration of its characters, and the message it conveys resonates better than Surveyamp's, which just felt kind of convoluted at times. Again, two great action shows, but with this, 2006 begins to pull ahead. Number 4, Walking to the NHK vs. 91 Days. So here we are again with two shows that are completely different. 91 Days tells a story of revenge set in Prohibition era America and delivers a thrilling story filled with action and drama. It's a show that blends the line between good and evil with the protagonist being a villain depending on how you look at the show, and that kept it really interesting for the few episodes where there weren't people shooting each other. On the other hand, Welcome to the NHK is a show that explores the life of a shardin as he is sort of forced to become a part of society. It's a drama that focuses on the psychological aspects of the characters, showing all the ways they're broken and trying to get by. It is easy to relate to the struggles that Sato and his friends go through, and that's what gives the show so much power. As Sato sees himself in those around him, the viewer sees himself in him, and this is a frightening prospect. Even apart from the relatability the show offered, the drama delivered several incredibly powerful moments, and the show has some of the best character exploration the medium has to offer. So while it's difficult to compare two shows that are so different, the drama and relatability of NHK puts it above 91 Days, which isn't much more than a typical action show. Number 5. Oran High School Host Club vs. Flip Flappers this isn't the first time I've written about it, but I really have no idea how to describe my thoughts on Flip Flappers. It's a magical girl show by some definitions. These girls explore different worlds, there are lots of pretty colors, and there's a plot if you get far enough into it. It's one of those shows I really can't put into words all it offers, so just go watch it and you might understand. Its main strength lies from its sense of wonder it establishes with the amazing animation. It's able to use all these different worlds to explore the characters and also comment on society as a whole. There's a lot in here about growing up, finding your place in the world, along with the power of dreams and illusions, making it one of the most unique anime I've ever seen. The main issue I had with it is that it was boring at the beginning, with it either feeling like it was at the shallow end of just here a lot of pretty colors, or it's so deep that I can't get into it because there's nothing in face value for me to care about. But this did subside after a few episodes, and after I did, then I really liked this show. And then Oran is a bit more straightforward, as it is a parody of the reverse harem genre, with a mostly normal girl meeting and growing closer to a bunch of hot and insane guys. While a show like this would work well as just a comedy, which is something it does for a while, it goes much deeper than just that, taking all these guys with eccentric personalities and explores why they are the people they are, and how they have moved on from the struggles that they deal with to become the people that they are today. This makes it into a great character-driven story with a lot of humor thrown in. But the plot could be rather sparse at times, and while the stories of each episode were never bad, they sometimes didn't feel like they contributed much to the story as a whole. So, which one of these is the better show? 
Well, these are both great shows, and they actually do have some similar strengths and weaknesses, but I'm going to give this one to Flip Flappers because I feel it has more substance than the simpler Oron. And so now we're at three shows for 2006 and two for 2016, and now to go find out what else is on the list so I can get to recording the rest of it. Now, at number six, we have Higurashi vs. Assassination Classroom. So, here we have two shows about friendship, about overcoming impossible odds, and about, of course, killing people. Anime is weird. Higurashi is a show that is known for its horror elements, having plenty of blood and gore during some of the shocking scenes. But what really makes Higurashi stand out is its mystery elements, woven through arcs which slowly reveal the information and the truth about what's really going on. There's also a strong focus on the friendship and bond that these characters have as they try to fight against the forces of fate. There are a lot of great suspense elements here, and I love the uplifting message about friendship that the show surprisingly held. Unfortunately, the show's length and structure did lead to it becoming predictable near the end, and the second season really did not have the same powers as the first did, which I found disappointing. Then there's Assassination Classroom, a show about a mysterious creature who says he will destroy the world at the end of the school year, and it's up to this class of misfits to assassinate him before the time comes. I love the way the show is able to drive home its message about making a difference in the world through the absurd concept, and a lot of the show is rather comical, but but this leads itself well to the serious moments having a lot of power. Unfortunately, the serious moments oftentimes don't make that much sense, which really does make the show not as good as it could be. So this is another hard decision. Both these shows have a really strong moment, but also more than a few parts where it felt like they just fell flat. But I am going to go with the Assassination Classroom here because its absurdity better excuses its feelings, and I feel the message of the show is more powerful. And when both these shows focus on their message as much as they do, I think this is an important distinction. So now 2006 and 2016 are tied, and I'm honestly surprised. I wonder what will happen next. Number 7. Black and White vs. To Be Hero To Be Hero is my favorite short anime ever. It tells the story of a man who sells toilets, but when he comes home one day, he's sucked into his toilet and must become a superhero, but now he looks completely different, so his daughter kicks him out of his house, so he has to go live with his neighbor who's an exhibitionist. And that's the normal part of the story. This is a great comedy, constantly adding to the absurd plot and even throwing in some great action near the end. But what makes this show really special is the final twist in the last episode, which, well, yeah, one of the best final episodes I had seen, and that was great. And then Black and White is a movie that I cannot pronounce the Japanese name of, with a very unique animation style and a story about these two Orhan brothers who fight to protect their city. Yeah, this is another one where I'm bad at describing it. But there is a great psychological element to these characters which are explored and they woven nicely into the story of those who are trying to take over the city in a way and these brothers trying to fight them. And, well, it's just a great story about family, a lot of great characters, and just an overall great movie. So, for this one, the winner is Black and White. To Be Hero is a great show, as I already said, but it isn't much more than a good comedy, while Black and White does more with attention, character exploration, and unique styles. So, I'm going to say it wins here. And so, with that, 2006 is up by one point again. Number 8. Noeen vs. Mob Psycho 100 it is no secret that I like time travel stories, and Noeen is one of the best examples of time travel in anime. The show tells the story of a battle waged across different timelines, with different versions of the same character playing a role. Seeing the different versions of the characters and how the circumstances of their lives changed them ended up creating a great story. Plus, all the action certainly did not hurt. It might be a bit convoluted at times, but that's not too uncommon for time travel stories, and while well, this is just an overall solid show. And then there was Mob Psycho, which blew me away on pretty much every level. Its story constantly used what we'd expect from a teenager with superpower story to its advantage, and the challenges the characters faced were always interesting, whether they were mundane or involved special powers, or sometimes were both. The animation was also some of the best the medium has to offer, and the uniqueness of the thematic presentation really made this show stand out. The only issue I really had with it was that it was incomplete, but even that isn't as detrimental as it would be, since the thematic message is wrapped up nicely here, so it doesn't feel like we need a second season, at least not as much as most other incomplete shows feel. So the winner here is Mob Psycho pretty easily. A show that excels at so much pretty easily beats a show which is just good most of the time. Number 9. Cheer Boys vs. Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya There are some anime that I have no idea how they could possibly be good, and Cheer Boys was one of these. It tells the story of a men's cheerleading team and the struggles they go through, both brought on by the competitions and also their own personal struggles, as they try to balance their desire to be a great cheerleading team while also dealing with the struggles of everyday life of a college student. While this show may have had its issues such as underdeveloped supporting cast and supporting parts, it was still a show that was memorable enough for it to be in the number 9 spot for me. Wait, I put this at number 9? That doesn't seem right. Oh, wait, 88 Expert, you gave me the wrong envelope. Oh well, small mix-ups happen like this all the time, right?
But it turns out the real entry for 2016 at number 9 is my favorite sports anime of all time, Keijo, with 8 exclamation points, and I actually wrote all 8 explanation points. So, Keijo is one of those examples of a show that is pure fun. They start off with a stupid concept with characters trying to knock each other off a platform using their boobs and butts, but then they take this absurd concept and run with it. They develop all these different techniques, and the matches ended up feeling very much like the action scenes in my favorite action shonen shows. And plus, you had all the different references to other shows that made it even more fun, especially the battle with the Gates of Booty Lot and the whole parody of the fate thing with Emiya, and that was... Yes, that was yes. And then we have Haruhi, which is more of a mixed bag. It's a blend of supernatural and slice of life, and this was incredible for its time and its different way of doing things. It really knew how to push the boundaries of what anime was capable of. There were a lot of great moments that got into the supernatural, but also some just really funny slice of life moments. And then the movie is one of the best anime movies ever made. Granted, I didn't really care for season 2, but even Endless 8 was redeemed by the movie, so I have to give it at least a little bit of credit, though not much. So I'm going to give this one to Hara. It may have had its issues, but I feel that it's an overall strong show, and it had more of a lasting impact on me than just a show that was dumb fun, even if there was a lot of fun to be offered there. Now for number 10, Buso Rankin vs. Magical Girl Raising Project. Buso Rankin is an action shonen that feels very much like the classic shonen anime of the 2000s. It has a great blend of action and comedy along with a hero's willpower that would overcome anything to protect his friends and family. And the show also parodied some of the other usual tropes of the genre, which, well, that was a lot of fun. It really is a great show for those who got into anime with things like Bleach or Naruto, especially considering this one is complete and without needing 500 episodes to do so. Unfortunately, while it has many of the strengths of these shows that I love, it also has some of the weaknesses, specifically a protagonist that became so overpowered that he makes the rest of the cast useless, and that just takes away a lot of the tension that a show like this should offer. And then for 2016, we have Magical Girl Raising Project, which is my favorite Dark Magical Girl show, because I do not count incomplete shows when I compile a favorites list like that. This one is also on the darker end of the spectrum of cute girls trying to save the world, and I love the way the show did the battles here. Each of these characters has different tactics and techniques, and it really drives the suspense as you try to figure out how they're going to try to overcome each other with their own powers. It was also not a show that pulled its punches, as there are a fair share of character deaths, and these did have a lot of impact, especially on the pure and innocent main character here. There are some issues here, like the cast being too big to be developed well, but we still got some really interesting characters, and the dynamic between all of them was really great. But if you want a show filled with cute girls, violence, and death, this is one I would recommend. And so without too much debate, I'm going to go with the blood-filled Magical Girl show as the winner here because it really did have that much of an emotional impact. So we're tied going into the final comparison and I'll be honest I didn't think we would get this close and as I say these words I actually don't know who the winner is going to be. So now to go look up who the final comparison will be and then I will be back after I record that. Number 11. Coyote Ragtime Show vs. Moa Curry. Well I don't think I could have picked too much more different shows if I tried. From 2016, we have Momo Curry, which is my favorite romance because of how well it nails the cute romance genre. It has two high school students in love growing closer to each other, and she is an obsessive stalker. Well, maybe that last part shouldn't be cute, but it is in the show, and the love that these two characters have for each other is something that always put a smile on my face. While there are other romances I like, they tend to get bogged down by a lot of drama, but this isn't the case here. There's just enough of the plot to keep the show going, even if it is often resolved by the end of each episode. And then for 2006, we have the Space Western Coyote Ragtime Show, which captures a sense of adventure that few other shows seem to have, with a story spanning multiple plants and following a crew of outlaws and the police who want to bring them to justice. There is an exciting plot here, cool characters, some decent action, so all the things I look for in a show. Unfortunately, it didn't really do anything more than decent, so while the plot was okay, it wasn't really that thrilling. But between the two of these shows, the choice is easy, because it's mainly men doing mainly things in space versus cute characters doing cute things in high school, so the obvious winner here is Momo Curry. Because if a show can draw me in and fill me with so much happiness just by being cute, then it deserves to win, especially over a show that just didn't really make me feel much. And yeah, this is kind of strange for me, because I normally say that an anime just being cute is enough for me, but well, it worked in Momo Curry's case. So that means that 2016 has won 6 of these ranks, while 2006 won 6, which means that 2016 is the best year of anime ever, at least according to an objective analysis of my subjective opinions. So, stand user, you were right all along. Your tweet from a year ago that inspired me to make multiple videos digging into the issue predicted the truth so far in advance. You are truly a man wise beyond your years. And now this is the part of the video where I ask for your opinion on this comparison. Which year do you think was better? Why? Is it another year that you think is even better than the two I've talked about? I know a lot of people like 2007, but well, I don't have to watch everything from that year as well. And I know there might be some issues with how I did the list, 
Still, this was fun. So what topic should I next cover that will require me to watch way more anime than I probably should? I already have ideas. These ideas scare me. I don't know why I'm doing it. But hey, hopefully we'll get to watch lots of anime in progress. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and all the other videos related to it. And I will see you all next time.